Hello and welcome back to my job tutorial series. As always, you can see our product from the last episode, which is over bitwise and bit shift operands. And we're going to get into this episode, which is all about classes and methods, mainly about final and abstract classes and methods. And of course, today is episode 20, which, you know, a lot of episodes so far. It's pretty nice. Having fun. Hope you guys are learning a lot. <laughs> Either way, it's creating the project. We can set up our normal class structure. Oh, that was wrong. But do I? C yes, I care. Cause you can't just re mess. You can't just mess up acronyms. It's uncivil. Wrong acronyms are wrong. Yeah, there's no references, you can trust me. It's just a empty package. Don't think there are any real preconditions. Don't care. <laughs> Should have just deleted it and made a new one. That would have been quicker. Well, now that I took enough enough of your time, <laughs> we might as well get started. Now, we're not going to do that much with our main class today, because we're mainly going to be creating other classes. But, of course, we always have to have one, or else, you know, it's no use to compiling if we don't have a main class. Let's just start. We'll start with abstract classes. And we're going to say this class is abstract, which is a Java keyword. Now, what abstract means is that you can't um, instantiate abstract class. So if we went over to our main method again, and we said abstract class, abstract class equals new abstract class, We'll get an error. You say you cannot instantiate the type abstract class because it's abstract. Now, what abstract means? You know, you can't you can't um, instantiate it, but you can um, subclasses. You can subclass it, which is what abstract is all about. So we're just going to create a useless constructor. See how useless we can make this. Yep, that that'll that's pretty abstract. We'll just do a couple things. Don't have to spell that out a lot of times. Now we can do public void set abstracticity. There. Simple class. Now what also we can do is um, do public boolean is abstract. We'll just say return false. Well, actually, oh wait, no, that, that's besides the point. Actually, this is a method. We're going to end it with a semicolon, and we're going to make this method abstract. See, no errors, even though it doesn't have a method body. That's the whole point of abstract. Now, an ab if your class has an abstract method, your class has to be abstract. But you can have an abstract class without an abstract method. Um, but an abstract class means you don't, like, if this um, implemented an interface, it doesn't have to put the um, interface methods in here. You can put some, but you don't have to put all. And if it um, extends a super class, you don't have to have a constructor and such. But when it actually has an abstract method, that means when you extend this, you have to give this method a body. So let's go ahead and extend this. So we'll just say subclass. And of course, 
we want this to extend our abstract class. Now we'll get an error. We just need to add the constructor because you know you always have to add a constructor. We have to make this look less ugly. And then we'll still have an error because we need to add the unimplemented abstract method. So now what we have is abstract and we'll make this a, a little less ugly. Because you know yeah. And at override annotations are always nice. So now we have to do something with is abstract. So we can return this. Uh, I'm going to go back to abstract class and make this protected. So we can actually do this. We need a ternary operator. So if abstracticity is greater than 5, it'll return true, else it'll return... F Actually, we don't even need to do a ternary, we can just do that. Yeah, okay, so there we go. Actually, going to rename this subclass 1, since we're going to make another one. So we can actually show the total implementation of this. So now we're going to add another class. And this is going to be subclass 2. And this is also going to extends, extends abstract class. And then we'll just do, we did a public boolean is abstract. So this one's going to be a bit more strict. We have to have a higher abstractivity for it to be considered abstract. So now that we have those, we're going to go back here. They're actually going to set up a method. And it's going to be um, public static um has, I will just do is abstract. And you're going to, to this, we're going to take an abstract class. And this has to return boolean. So basically, right now we can accept any abstract class, which means we can accept subclass 1 and subclass 2. We can't accept an abstract class because you can't instantiate an abstract class, so you can't pass it to the method. So we're going to do um, this. And we're just going to give this an abstract. We're going to give both of them an abstractivity of 10. there. So what we can do, do system.out.println this, well you we can't do this, we'll do is abstract a1 we'll do the same exact thing. So that means um, well they may be two different classes, they're both part of abstract class and since abstract class has an is abstract method any all of its subclasses will have this abstract but all of the, the subclasses may have this do different things of course that's up to you as the programmer to decide what different things that may do you might have something you might have an entity class and have the abstract class abstract method on update so every entity you extend that with might do something different on update which is one of the biggest points about being abstract and you know your world can just call update for every single entity in the world and you know they're all do something different but right now, we're just testing the um, ambiguous abstractivity, abstractivity of something. So we should get uh, true and then false for this. If it wants to run, system.out.print. Yeah, is abstract. This is this dot is abstract. Try that again. Don't know what's going on. There. 
true, and then false. Because why they have the same abstractivity, subclass 1, um, your abstract, um, subclass 2 is a bit more stringent than subclass, subclass, yeah, than some class, crap, subclass 2 is a bit more stringent than subclass 1 about if you're abstract or not. So, you know, they can do two different things. So that's the abstract classes. So now you know what abstract classes and abstract methods are all about. So now we can go into final. We're just going to put this over here. Ticity is how you pronounce that. Let's put this all over here. So we can still keep this here. So now we're going to create yet another class. And this one is going to be called Final Class. And what this class is going to be is Final. Now, um, the math class in Java, which you know we all know and love, <laughs> is Final. So you can't extend math. So if we try to, like, extend math, We'll get an error because the type final class cannot subclass the final class math because it's final. But this is a final class. So we can just do a couple things. Like you can't make an abstract final class because that'd be redundant and useless. Because abstract you have to subclass and final it's impossible to subclass. Just a bit of redundancy there. This can just be private, we don't even care. Let's do a public final class. And we'll just do a no public void print IEC. There. You just have a useless class right here. Now, if we try to make another class, we'll just call this subclass. And we say subclass extends final class, we will, of course, get an error. So, because it's a final class. So then we actually didn't need that at all. Just another example. Okay, but let's go back into our abstract class and do another final thing. So we're just going to say public final void print abstractity system dot out dot print line this dot abstractity. So, you know, no problems there. But what that means is that if we go into one of our subclasses and we try to, well, we don't even need to put at override if it's, so if we try to put public void print abstracticity, we should get an error. Can't override the final method because final methods are final and they don't allow you to override them. So that means if we did go to main, we get, well, we, first we should do final class, finally, oh, dang it, final equals new, final class, 52, 53 is what I typed, in fact. Now we can just do for now dot print IDC. And of course, we should get 53. That's easy enough. The other thing we can do is do this. But we can also do um, system.out.println to add a space there. But then we can do a1. Dot print abstractity since it inherits it from abstract class but it can't override it because it's final but we can still call it of course and you, as you can see it's 10 
It's the same for A2. So that's all you need to know about abstract classes and methods and final classes and methods. It was a pretty short episode, but I hope you learned um, what you needed to learn. Again, if you need to know anything about Java, or you don't, or you need to learn something, or you don't know something, and you need to know how to do something, please just leave me a comment, and I will be more than happy to make an episode episode dedicated to teaching people what you need to know. So again, this is uh, me, Borellaborn, uh, ending this episode. So, uh, see you later, and good programming to you.